Hello everyone, in today's video, we are going to learn how to draw forest with markers. There are two drawings I will work through in this tutorial. I will talk about the basic form and shading at the beginning. For each drawing, I will start with a light pencil sketch, then I will walk you through the coloring process. You can find the detailed supply list and the timestamp in the description box. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I made several tutorials of how to draw individual trees with markers before, but I haven't shown you how to draw a group of trees together. First, let's talk about the basic form and shading. To better help us learn how to add shading, we can simplify the form of a tree into a sphere on the top of a cylinder, or a cone on top of a cylinder depends on what kind of trees you want to draw. To create more organic forms, we will break down one sphere into several ovals. Each oval is one collection of leaves. For pine trees, we can break down one cone into a few cones stacked on top of each other. When adding shading, keep these values in mind. They are highlight, light, mid-tone, core shadow, and cast shadow. The reflected light is not quite visible on the trees, so I won't emphasize it in this video. Basically, the areas that are close to the direct light source will appear brighter. To create a range of basic values, you will prepare three shades of markers. Two shades of markers can also do the job, but sometimes the color may lack contrast. Most of the time, you will use the lightest shade of markers to create a light tone and mid tone, the second shade to create a mid tone and core shadow and the third shade for the core shadow and cast shadow. Always start with the lightest shade to gradually build up the value. I think in this way it's easier to build up depths and less chance to make mistakes. Let's take a look at how to add shading when drawing a group of trees. I will use the second drawing which we will work on later as an example here. We can simplify the tree forms to do a simple shading practice together to better understand the value and the lighting. Let's draw some basic geometric shapes first. If you have watched my other tree tutorials, you probably already know the basic shading process, so I will try not to repeat too much here. Let me summarize some main points that you need to keep in mind when drawing a group of trees. First, you need to decide a direct lighting source. Here the lighting source is from the upper left and slightly to the front of all trees. Second, briefly analyze the lighting. Trees that are closer to a dark light will appear brighter and have more light values. That means the rounded tree here will appear brighter than the triangular trees behind. Third, to create a depth, draw more details on the object that are closer to the viewer. Draw less details on the object in the background. Therefore, here I will add more shading details on the rounded trees. Fourth, pay attention to the cast shadow. For example, if a tree is very close and right behind another tree, the cast shadow of the front tree will partially fall on the body of the tree behind. Paying attention to these details will help you create the depths in your drawing. Lastly, trees are super far away from the viewer in the background will have less value and clarity. You don't need to memorize anything here. As we start to draw, I will walk you through these details. When you are ready, let's start our first drawing. Let's practice drawing a forest pathway. This is a very simple and quick practice. Use a pencil to sketch a pathway first. Make sure the path narrows as it goes off in the distance. Follow along the path, sketch the tree trunk one by one. Make sure the height of the tree trunk, the thickness of the tree trunk, and the gap between trees decrease as the trees are further from the viewer. Avoid drawing symmetrical tree branches. Try to create a more irregular shape. Don't apply too much pressure on the paper. We will erase the pencil outline later. Mm -hmm. 
Simply draw straight lines here to outline the tree trunks. No need to add details here. Remember, objects are further away from the viewer, appear fewer details. I'm drawing some squibbly lines to outline some shrubs on the ground. There will be some small plants on the pathway. Make sure you briefly outline them as well. Now let's draw some circles. Each circle is one collection of leaves. Then you can erase the excessive lines and make sure your pencil outline is clean. Once the pencil outline is covered by the marker, you won't be able to erase it. But most of them will become unnoticeable after you add darker colors. Prepare three shades of green markers. Start with the lightest shade. We are going to add the light tone and the mid tone first. Make sure you hold the marker with a right angle, so you can draw these strokes effortlessly. Basically, I'm filling each circle with marker strokes. Don't equally fill the entire circle. Leave some white space. Using both long strokes and short strokes to color the tree clump will make it look more organic instead of geometric. Once you go over all plants and trees with the lightest shade of green you have, wait a few minutes to let the ink dry. Meanwhile, we can start to color the tree trunk. I like using warm gray colors for the tree trunk. The light source is from the upper left, so the right side of the tree trunk will be darker than the left side. Notice I left some white striped space on the tree trunk. Sometimes, when the sunlight passes through other trees and falls on the tree trunk, you will see a stripe-shaped light spot. I will color them later with a yellow color. Now this drawing have a basic light tone and a little mid tone. Go ahead and erase all pencil outline. Use a light yellow color to draw some light spots on the ground. Now grab the second shade of green you have. We are gonna add some mid tone values. Remember. The form of each tree clump is kind of like a sphere. When the light source is from the upper left, we will add darker values on the lower right part of each clump. The coloring technique in this drawing is fairly simple. We are using the same type of strokes on trees. 
and change their stroke direction a little for the small shops. Following a simple lighting direction, we are only adding more darker value on lower right part of each clump and the right part of each tree trunk. Remember the cat shadow. These two shrubs are on the right side of the tree, so the cat shadow of this tree most likely will fall on the shrub. For the small plants on the pathway, make sure they also have their own light to dark values. Adding more darker values on the bottom of each plant to create a depth. After using the second shade of green, this drawing already has a basic volume. Now use a warm gray again, we can color the ground. Use a darker warm gray to add the mid-tone and core shadow to each tree trunk. When coloring the tree branches, I actually found out that the chisel tip is better than the fine point tip. There is a small flat edge on the long side of the chisel tip. You can draw more straight and finer lines using that part. I think it works even better than the brush tip. Now we can add some darker values on the ground. Try not to cover the light spots. Here you can use a second shade of the green again to add more gradient to the mid-tone. Or you can pick a different green color like I did here. The purpose of this step is basically adding more value transition before we use the darkest shade of the green. I like using the pen to draw some outlines to the front trees and shrubs. Remember, objects that are closer to the viewer appear more details. By adding more details here will better help create the depth in your drawing. But you don't have to use a pen. You can keep using markers to add more details. Using a pen to add outline to an object is a quick way to make this object stand out. On the tree trunk, Draw thicker lines on the shadow side, draw thinner lines on the left side. Using different line thickness can also add the depth in your drawing.
The drawing looks pretty nice as a step. To add more contrast and depth, I'm using the third shade of the green to echo shadow to each clump. Slow down your pace when using darker colors. Only add a couple strokes or dots on the lower right part of each clump. The tree crown part is pretty much done. Let's use a third shade of the warm gray to add the core shadow value to the tree trunk and the ground. Use a light yellow marker to color the light stripe on the tree trunk and draw some sunlight beams. To draw a beam of sunlight, you can grab a ruler, a white color pencil, and a yellow color pencil to draw some straight lines here. The lower part of the light will appear less brighter, so you can erase it a little here. This is a quick way to draw beams of light. Another way is leaving a few white spots for the light beams at the very beginning and color it later, but I think it will take more time, so I take a shortcut here. To add the highlight, use a gel pen to draw some dots on each clump and some small lines on the shrubs. From here, I'm just using previous markers to repeat same steps to keep adding more darker values to increase the volume. There are small details and could be tedious sometimes, but don't rush at this part. You can take a break and put the drawing far away from you to take a look at it. If you have watched my first tutorial before, you probably noticed this tree has the exact same color theme but just different styles.
Here I'm using a very dark gray to add more contrast. Be very careful when you are using a very dark color. Don't use it too much everywhere. This is pretty much the final look of this drawing. I hope you enjoying this little practice. When you are ready, we can start to draw something a little bit more complicated. For the second practice, we are going to draw a small forest scene. Before we start, let's briefly talk about what kind of marker strokes we will use in this drawing. The first stroke is a diagonal straight stroke that I like to use on trees that have rounded forms. The second stroke is a curved stroke you can use on the sky or on trees. There are many different kinds of evergreen trees. Some of them have branches are going up, some of them going down, and some of them are kind of parallel. You can use the edge of the chisel tip to easily draw these strokes. Make sure you decide one type of stroke and consistently use it on one tree. You can follow along with this marker stroke practice to figure out which one you want to use on your trees. This last stroke, you can use it on drawing shrubs. I will draw incline on front trees. I will only use simple squiggly lines. You can use other type of marks. Just make sure you add variations on the size and density when you are drawing these marks. Now let's start to draw. First, we need to focus on creating a nice composition sketching some basic shapes to locate each tree. If you want your forest to look more natural and believable, try to avoid using a symmetrical composition. Once you finish drawing circles and triangles, break down the big circle into a couple small circles. Each circle will be one group of tree leaves. Then go over each circle to sketch some scribbly lines to make the shape look more organic.
I sketched a few lines for the tree trunk. The rest of the evergreen tree trunk will be covered by leaves, so I won't sketch it here. Make sure you spend more time on the outline sketching part. Once you create a nice composition and shapes for your tree, the coloring process will be easier. Before we start to color, slightly erase all excessive lines. Make sure the outline is clean and light. I have talked about the basic shading at the beginning. If you haven't watched it, feel free to take a look. I have decided the light source is from the upper left and slightly to the front of all trees. So the upper left of this tree will have lighter value compared with the lower right part. Draw fast and apply less pressure on the light value part to create a lighter shade. Apply more pressures on the paper to create a darker shade. As you can see, by using one marker, you can create a small range of values, which slightly build the depth for this tree. Make sure the ink stays inside of your pencil outline, don't break the shape too much. The shading and the color steps are same with my other tree tutorials. So how do you choose what colors to use? One of the ways to create an illusion of depth is using more saturated colors on objects that are closer to the viewer, and less saturated colors on objects further away from the viewer. That's why I often use this yellow-green color on trees that are closer to the viewer. You will notice the first practice we did actually kind of lack a sense of space. Because we used the same set of color everywhere, the illusion of space was mostly created by the pathway, which has a linear perspective. In this drawing, there is no strong perspective. In order to add more depth, we need to pay more attention on the color selection and the shading. I'm moving the marker fairly fast horizontally to draw these strokes. The goal here is to create an organic shape instead of being too repetitive. When coloring the grass, you can use long strokes. Try to make sure the direction of all strokes is consistent, so your drawing will look more clean and tidy. The composition of this drawing is very simple. To create a strong focal point that guides the audience to view this drawing, I use a bright color and drawing more details. The focal point of this drawing is on this yellow green tree and its surrounding area. The bright green can quickly catch its viewers' attention. I will also add more details on this evergreen tree here. I don't want these two trees to stand out too much to fight with the focal point. 
so I use the pastel pink color here. I know this practice is kind of long. Drawing a bunch of trees together is not quite easy. But practice will help you get better. I did lots of practices before I filmed this video. And I actually filmed it many times. One of the times was because I accidentally deleted all my video files. So I had to redo it. But each time I get better and learn something new. There are many different ways to draw different kinds of evergreen trees. In this drawing, I basically use long and thin strokes to simulate the shape of the foliage while creating the light and dark value. If you would like to practice an easier version first, feel free to check another tutorial. I will put a link on the top right corner. Remember, the light source is from the upper left and slightly to the front of all trees. The front tree will have more lighter values than the tree behind. So don't add too much darker values here. Only add a few strokes on the lower right part of each clump.
To draw the tree branches, you can try using a small flat edge of your chisel tip. For me, it's easier to draw fine and straight lines by using the top edge of the chisel tip. I actually just found it out during this video. In the past and even my first draft, I always used the fine point, but the line was always too thick. When adding darker values on this part, be very careful, don't break the shape of the yellow-green tree. That's why we did a clear outline at the very beginning. Now we have created the basic light and mid-tone for each tree. Go ahead and erase the pencil outline. Don't worry about the pencil outline trapped under the marker ink. As we keep adding darker values, they will become less noticeable. Remember, we talked about objects are very far away from the viewer, will appear less clarity and less saturated. So here I'm using a cool and pastel color to draw some trees in the background.
Now it's time to add the core shadow and the cast shadow. Here I made a mistake using a very dark color too soon. As you can see, the contrast is way too strong here. That's why I switched to a lighter color after drawing a few strokes. These areas will be very dark at the end, but it doesn't mean we will only just use one very dark marker to color these areas. These dark areas also have a depth. To create the depth, it's easier to add darker values gradually when using markers. To further define the shape of the tree and make trees that are closer to the viewer stand out, we can use a pen to draw some outlines.
I think the tricky part to draw a group of trees is the dark value part. These dark values are the part of the evergreen trees. When you are adding colors here, you still need to be very consistent with your marker strokes. The dark value can also further define the edge of all the trees around. Be patient at this step. Here I have an example of my draft. As you can see, the shape of the yellow green tree is very messy. So make sure the shape of the tree won't get ruined after you add darker colors. At the very beginning, I used the long strokes to quickly add light tone to this drawing. From here, I basically only use small strokes to slowly add core shadow and cast shadow. These four rounded trees are closer to the light source. Everything behind these trees will appear darker. So from here, I will keep adding darker values on trees behind.
Now you can use the gel pen to add the highlight. On the edge of the shrub and on the grass, you can draw some short lines. On the tree trunk, I will add the highlight and smudge it a little, so it won't look too bright. Here you can use a very dark grey color to further increase the depth of your drawing. 